Good morning once again. Uh, now we are going into a follow-up conversation on uh, something we started yesterday. Uh, the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria says that by June 2021, uh, the Nigeria Eagle, Nigeria's international airline, will be launched. It's taking um, charge of some assets that were repossessed from ARIC and Aero contractors and will be using those assets to start their international airline. And so we've once again invited Dr. Austin uh, Ayogu. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Good morning. And uh, once again, James Durojai, uh, thank you very much and good morning to you. It's a pleasure. Good morning. Okay. Um, so yesterday, we, we, of course, we're getting into a, a little bit of the controversial part of this story. I'm, going, I'm starting with Mr. Um, Duro Jai this morning. Uh, you had little challenges with the process by which Amcon was taking charge of these airplanes and setting up its international airline. Uh, so let, let's first so let's start with that again this morning. Um, where do you think the biggest challenges are with this whole process um, concerning Arik Air, Aero Contractors and Amcon? Well, the biggest challenge that Amcon is going to face is from the original owners themselves, because they feel that the they feel that Amcon does not really have a right to dispose of their plane. Whereas, by the Amcon Act, Amcon has rights over the airplanes, and they can decide to dispose of the planes in order to recover their debt. So the law gives them that power. But the reason why it's going to create a legal hold for Amcon is because the owners of the original owners of the airline are not going to take it lightly with them. Take it lightly with them. So there is most likely going to be litigations okay. from I the company from them. Oh, okay, uh, let's bring in the accountant now, Mr. Anyogu. Uh, the lawyer is saying that there's going to be a legal issue with this, that you know the operators of the airlines will not allow Amcon do this. But we know that Amcon already owns controlling stakes in Arik and Aero, and that they have the rights according to, you know, they have federal powers to do that because Arik and Aero are in debt to them to the tune of billions of Naira. So can you kindly clarify just how much control um, Amcon has over the airlines, the fleets of Eric and Aero. Is that a question that says to me? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Um, when you talk about control, he who owns a slave owns his properties. And then the truth is this Amcon has disposed several assets of other business owners in the past. The only difference between the airline or the aviation industry is that their product or their property is not easily disposed or acquired. And then I can also understand the fact that Nigeria also is lacking in this area of uh, national career. So if you talk about uh, ownership or holding, I think that um, the indebtedness of the two airlines have actually eroded their, their stake in those businesses because I know Aero for, for, for one is owing huge amounts of money. I may not be able to say exactly what it is. And then if you look at the value of the company, if you look at the value of those aircraft, if you put them side by side, you may even be shocked that they may not be able to actually pay off what they are owing in terms of um, value. So rather than I, I am, I'm con, disposing them of, it's better to now convert them to use for the, be, I mean, for the benefit of the, the entire Nigerians. Yeah, there, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing that goes smoothly, actually. Before Amcon can come to the level of deciding that they are going to float this air, uh, international airline using those aircraft, it means that value of those aircraft, the ownership of those aircraft, has been transferred to them. You know, and then we don't know the essence because we're, we're probably not inside Amcon. We don't know the essence of um, core proceedings or core judgments that's already in place, you know, I have, because there could be a court judgment that probably also gives them the power to say, 
oh, at this point, you have exhausted all available options of recovery. You can then now uh, dispose or convert or uh, acquire, you know. So uh, we talk about ownership, uh, or, uh, the percentage will not even come to bear here, you know. Okay. Depending on the evaluation and depending on the due diligence, okay. the, 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 the okay. values okay. of the okay. owners of those businesses okay. may have um, been eroded, you understand? So that is my position. All right. I, I, I want you to both now, you know, I, I want to have a quick conversation on the survival of the Nigerian aviation industry. Um, for the last couple of years, of course, uh, with uh, uh, Hadi Sirika um, in charge, you know, there, there's been some level of stability. Um, you know, but uh, Mr. Yango, I'll start with you. I want you to speak, you know, mostly on how airlines in Nigeria are coping, how they've survived uh, financially in the last few years. And, you know, what are the chances of more of them also falling into this financial crisis now that we're, you know, in a COVID-19, in a pandemic? The, the economy has been terrible for them. Um, do you think that, you know, they will continue to struggle, you know, to make it through? There's so many of them. There's Asman, there's uh, Ibom Air now, there's, of course, uh, Dana Airlines. There's so many of them in the country currently. How do you think that they would cope? And what's the fina financial picture in the aviation industry like? Um, well, the truth is that the margins are getting thinner and thinner. Um, the airlines are not, the operating in Nigeria are not really making uh, much money, I have to be honest with you. Because um, if you look at the, the composition, and the, because it's very expensive to maintain those uh, uh, planes, and they are strictly regulated, you know. And the truth is that Nigerians, most of our local flights, are we're not really paying the value for those flights. You know, it has been highly mm -hmm. subsidized to the, to the extent that the airlines are not truly or really making money. They are definitely going to struggle. And let me also say that the, apart from that, the pandemic has, like you rightly said, has also helped matters. We have, um, we are, we are living in a situation where uh, people at times, the, the airplanes are not even in full capacities in terms of uh, flights. And the number of flights that is um, run is also very, very limited. And we are not even used to night flights in Nigeria to say, let them increase their their, 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 their operations and all that. So they are definitely going to struggle. The Naira value has been devalued. Um, the, 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 there's no government subvention, so to say. There's no um, government intervention, so to say, in the airline, as, as far as I'm concerned. So by and large, we just hope, apart from um, peace, air peace, uh, who probably have enough fleet in the in the in his um, in the, in the uh, uh, coffers i don't see any other airline that seems to be striving you know and airbus also made some money during the uplifting of the of the people who are held back by the pandemic during the lockdown and all that so we are going to struggle except something happens now uh, as long as we are still paying in naira and they are paying in dollars for all the services they are getting abroad they are going to struggle all right. Uh, Otarige, I wanted to get the opinion of uh, Mr. Jurujay on that one. Um, well, I think because of time, I think we can we can do okay. something else. Okay, so Ms. Anyago, let's, uh, let's uh, wrap up with you on this one, talking about debt recovery. I mean, Amcon has struggled over the years to get, you know, to recover, you know, money loaned or borrowed to several businesses. I mean, we recall last week or so, we talked about how over 300, you know, firms, companies, businesses and individuals were owing money yes. to the government and how Amcon was struggling to recover that. Is there one sure way to make sure that this issue doesn't persist and that the government gets back, you know, what is owed to them when they borrow money uh, to businesses? Well, you see, if, if, you, if you look at the genesis of those um, loans or those bad um, toxic um, assets, it's actually emanated from the banks. You know, so you actually have to take it back to the roots. And what is the root? The root is how there must be stringent regulation from C Central Bank of Nigeria on the issue of loans. In as much as we want to encourage business people, in as much as we want to make sure that uh, the economy strives. We also have to think about recovery uh, in terms of getting back your money, 
you know, when you giving out. So actually, we'll take it back to the banks and Central Bank of Nigeria. Because what Amcon did was actually a salvaging position. The banks were in a very precarious situation. The economy was going to be, I mean, was, was going to be collapsed, so to, so to say. But Amcon came and rescued the banks. And what they did was that, I remember then, I was still in the bank then, what, what ICANN did was we were asked to list the, our toxic assets, those ones that are very difficult to recover. Because what the banks sold to ICANN, um, to Amcon, is those ones that are very difficult to recover. So Amcon actually bought this at a very cheap rate. You know, for example, if the asset total liability owed to the bank uh, in terms of risk assets is one billion, uh, Amcon actually could have paid about 150 million and take over those assets because they are already bad loans. You know, so Amcon acquired toxic and very difficult loans. You know, from initial. So I think to stop to stem. The, the, the happened in the past. We need to go back to central bank to put a stiffer regulation in terms of giving out loans. All right. You know, there are, there are conditions which you give loans. So that is actually where it will start from because we are one and one economy. You understand? So I, I, I want to believe that it has to go back to the genesis. Who are those giving out these loans? You know, and what are the conditions before you give loans? And how are the recovery, uh, what are the transaction dynamics? You know, everything must be regulated All properly right. and ensure that our economy does not face such a uh, situation anymore. All right. Um, from the Nigeria Airways, which folded many, many, many years ago, uh, to, of course, projections on Nigeria Air, uh, to the Nigeria Eagle now. Let's see how this turns out. And, um, of course, looking forward to what June 2021 brings. Um, hopefully, we will have a national carrier, according to what Amcon has said. Thank you very much, Dr. Austin Ayongu, for your time and for speaking with us this morning. Also, to James Duro uh, Jai for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks once again. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Um, stay with us. I'm looking forward, really looking forward to seeing those green air hostess uniforms um, <laughs> on the Nigeria National Carrier. But we have entertainment coming up next. Somebody has been body shamed lately and we'll tell you about it. If you have stretch marks, why you should not care um, about what people say. Coming up next on the program.